It was an audition. It was just a straight audition from the agency. Said, go down for uh, Sue Suckman. You're going to read for Little House on the Prairie, of which I was a big fan. I, I loved, loved Little House. Listen to those frogs, huh? Puts me to mind when I was your age. Nothing I like better than going night frog. I used to sneak out at night so I could do it. Of course, I know who Michael Landon is. I'm really excited to meet him. I read, and we wait. I go, okay, everyone, thank you very much. And I'm thinking, okay, well, I guess that's that. And the way they kind of did it was Michael was behind us and Sue was right in front of us. And everyone, and Susan said, okay, everybody, go, let's go. And Michael had his hand on my shoulder. And I start to go, and he goes, no, no, you stay here. And I'm like, oh, okay. So they all went back to the car. And he goes, okay, you got it, kiddo. And I'm like, oh, great. The next day, less than 24 hours from the time that I got the call to go audition, I was on the set in Simi Valley doing, I think, yeah, it was Wolves. I had no idea what I was in for. I thought it was literally something that was going to be maybe a one shot and then when they said reoccurring i thought i'd show up every now and again i didn't know that i'd be there for so many years and have so many adventures wolves is a really big deal wolves was the first episode i did oh andy look he's a sheep if i remember correctly uh andy and half might find a wolf a baby cub or a bunch of them and they want to keep them they think they're puppies, but they keep them in the barn, and the wolves come after the puppies. And then Pa has to save them from, you know, the, the devastating wolves. Everyone all right? Basically, you're, you're playing a frightened child who's being attacked by wolves. And... It, I just find it, on some level, just really, really funny that people have such a warm, happy response to Little House when each and every story is so devastating. He saved my life. Mom will save my life. <laughs> Things I remember about wolves are uh, they had real puppies, but they had to paint them as wolves. And so the puppies smelled like this particular type of paint and at the time they didn't have all these like little lights that they do now they had these big arc lights that you know are hot and so they would heat the puppies up and the puppies paint would start to like off gas or whatever where they just they would smell like paint so uh they were still nursing so little puppies i had like cuts all over my hands because during the scenes the little puppies would want to nurse on your fingers so all I remember about wolves is the smell of this paint and like the, the sensation of these little wolves biting my, you know, biting my fingers while I'm trying to remember my lines. Oh, and by the way, I had watched Little House. So there's Half Pint. There's, you know, Melissa Gilbert right in front of me, who now is my best friend in the show. But, you know, in between takes, I'm like, and remember the episode where you found the, the gold? I like that. And remember when there's the race with Bunny? And that was a really good one. And she's like, yeah, that was really great. And, you know, it's like it took a while for, you know, she was always really sweet. But, you know, I was starstruck. But as anyone who will meet Melissa will tell you, as soon as you do meet her, you feel very comforted by her. She's very maternal. I also thought that it was very, that she was very nice um, when you really didn't have to be as the star of the show. Not that you need to be mean, but you don't have to go out of your way to take care of someone who's new on the show, which she did. I thought she was very, very nice to me um, to this very day. And then the next episode after that was The Creeper of Walnut Grove, which was you know, a lot more fun. It was more of a comedy. He's not hungry. I am. I gave you half my lunch. So I'm only half starved. Oh, we can't have that, can we? Just so happens that I baked a nice apple pie for supper. Although the boy who was the creeper was stealing pies for his sick father. I mean, there's always that tragedy element. But I remember thinking, oh, this is, this is really fun. It was cooling right here, and now it's gone. The creeper strikes again. Doggone it, Andy. If we don't catch that creeper, he's going to turn us all into skeletons. Men Will Be Boys is probably my favorite Little House episode. Um, it's the one Little House, I have a four-year-old, it's the one Little House that I've like made him watch because it's me, my brother, which is my son's uncle. I'll load it tomorrow. That's as much a day's work as a man could expect. Andy and Albert 
want to stop going to school and get real men jobs because they're enough with this. We're 14. We're going to be real men. And Charles comes up with this brilliant idea to say, okay, I'm going to send a letter to, I think it was Mankato. Uh, and if you guys can get the letter and bring it back, then you can show us that you're responsible enough to be men and you can not go to school and get a job. They had this one scene where we're picking these berries, and I've never seen a berry bush. And so we, we see this berry bush, and they go, okay, you're going to pick all these berries, and you know, you're going to eat these berries. And it was really excited, and the berries were really good. So in between scenes, you know, I'd be picking berries and eating the berries. And this is like a subplot between me and the, and the prop guy, because I would always eat food that the prop guy would lay out, and he'd go, no, you can't, you know, we got to match, you know. And, so he comes up to me in between the scenes and he goes, and this Dean, the prop guy, he goes, Patrick, um, try not to eat the berries. I'm like, oh, oh, is it matching? And he goes, no, 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 we were up to like four o'clock last night stringing the berries onto the bush. It wasn't a real berry bush. It was like they couldn't find a berry bush. So they were sewing these berries onto this bush so that there would be berries for us to pick. And I was going and eating all of them. And so he goes, no, just calm down on this. Um, but the whole episode, we took place up there in Sonora and we had just so much fun shooting it. And look at us now. To be able to be on the show with my brother and experience all of that, it was really, it was not only healthy, but it was fun because you could have someone to turn to and share the experience with and have, you know, adventures with. Even that story about us being orphans. Well, that's all part of it. Wound up making us feeling good and her feeling good. There was a lot of attention paid to us we because right we were brothers, because we were adopted, because we were special needs kids when we were adopted, that they liked to talk to the Labrador boys a lot. So it was really, uh, it was interesting and it helped the show and it was just one of those things where it was just a great experience from beginning to end. Now, would you like a little dessert? Oh, I sure would. Oh, no, Andy. We've been given too much already. The other thing about Little House is, you know, everyone looks at it as a show and it's a job and there's... But come on, it's Little House. I mean, we're kids. We're running around in the dirt. We're playing with horses. It's really just wonderful fun. Cheaters, I always remember that as the episode with me and Allison. I got a hundred. It's easy when you know how to study. It was uh, Nellie Olson. Uh, wanted to do better in school and I was the son of the teacher and so she wanted me to get the answers and, and cheat off of me and I don't remember the exact machinations of you know, the Machiavellian way that she did it but she got me to like help her out to cheat normally I would refuse to help anyone who won't help himself but in your case there are special circumstances it was really fun because it was getting to work with someone different and she was fun to work with because she had this style of acting that was very much like herself. She was not afraid to, you know, get in your face and not afraid to be Nellie, which I think one of the reasons why people love Nellie so much is there was a, a joy that Allison got out of being nasty. You can and you will, or else I'll tell your mother how you've been cheating and you'll get the licking of your life. But off camera, nicest person on the set, you know. A favor. I can't promise that. You'll do it. I think so many times, so many actors don't want to go that extra mile of actually being really hated, really being the bad, you know, the bad seed. And I think both Allison and Catherine did a great job of relishing those, you know, performances. That was kind of you, Nellie. Just trying to be a good neighbor, Mother. Oh, mwah. Mr. Garvey, I do not lie. You do. My wife has never been... You look at the words on the page, and it's nowhere near what Catherine would deliver. You know, you read it, and it's like a 2, and Catherine performs it, and it's like a 12. I mean, she just amped everything up to the point where you really did feel like, Oh, Mrs. Olsen, what are you doing? Well, go ahead, Mr. Garvey. Ask her. You root for your hero or more because you're fighting this really horrible foe. How could you do such a thing? My favorite character in that whole dynamic was uh, Mr. Olson, Richard Bull. How dare you interrupt me when I'm talking? Harriet, you are always talking, 
even when you don't know what you're talking about. I know exactly what I'm talking about. He was, you know, the hen-pecked husband who had to deal with all of the craziness around him. Yeah, and I will spread whatever I want on it. He was the tether that kept the two crazy women from really being evil. For heaven's sake, what on earth is wrong now? Harriet, the switchboard may be yours, but the wire is mine. <gasps> As wanting of something as Nellie or Mrs. Olson was. They never killed anyone, they never whacked anyone, um, and that's because of Mr. Olson. You know, there would be a number of scenes where Mr. Olson would go, enough now. That is enough! And that was all he needed to say. I don't know what kind of stuff that he had going on, but they respected him, and I think that that was a real important part of the show to, to have a tether for these crazy antics of, you know, these, these ladies. My favorite, and I can't ever remember any of them, but, you know, when he says something under his breath and he has to come up with what it really could sound like, that was always the best. That was my favorite. Trouble is, I have too soft a heart for my own good. Hard as a rock. What? I said I've got to check the stock. Ah. I had no idea. I, I'm not a sports guy, so I had no idea who Merlin Olson was, which is just about the most ridiculous thing you can ever imagine, because it's like... It's like working with Merlin Olsen and not knowing he's a football player. My pa doesn't know anything about football. I remember talking to him, and <laughs> only now do I realize all of his reactions and how funny they were. I go, so I hear you're a football player. Because, I, you know, my parents told me he was a football player. And he goes, yes, that's, that's right. I go, did you like it? He goes, yeah, I, I enjoyed it. And, you know, kids are always wanting to hear the, the most awesome story. I go... Did you ever break someone's legs? He goes, well, let me put it this way. I had a job, and my job was to, you know, stop people from getting the ball. I think you got a team. I think we got a team. Jonathan. Take them nails. Excuse me, youngins. The other thing which was really strange about our whole relationship was this was his kind of second acting job. He played like a... a bodyguard on some TV movie and I'd been acting since I was three so I'd been acting about 10 years and Merlin had just started acting so in this really weird weird way I felt like I was tutoring Merlin as an actor not I didn't give him any advice or anything but I would see how he would work through it and you can see how Merlin's acting got so much better he was never a bad actor but his range expanded so that he could explore more areas of emotion and everything I'm through, Alice. Through. Uh, he was very, you know, the, the, the phrase taking you under a wing is definitely Merlin. And, you know, all the memories I have of him are very warm and very comforting, I guess is a good word. It's like, you know, you're sitting next to this big, huge dog, which will take care of you, but has never, ever turned on you. He, he was this big, huge man that I never heard raise his voice above a whisper. And, you know, I love my father. My father loved me. He is a wonderful father, but he was ill. And there was a lot that went along with that that you don't want to have to deal with when you're a kid. You know, you want the father that, you know, can be hit by a brick and not, not notice it. <laughs> when you lose somebody... Like your ma. Leave some awful scars, Andy. Because we loved her so much. And she was so special. I, I can't imagine another situation that would have been better for me. I don't know about my brother, but for me, that would have filled the gap that was in my life other than Merlin Olson. My brother Matt is bar none the best actor I've ever worked with. He is so primal in wherever he pulls his emotion from. I found myself, you know, on the set watching scenes that he was doing with Michael or other people because the stuff that Andy and 
Albert did really wasn't that emotional. It was fun, it was light, but you know, the real Albert, you know, drama stuff was usually with Michael. What do you say we do something about that starting tomorrow, huh? Thank you. He had the ability to access these really deep emotions, which, you know, Michael, you know, of course, as we've talked about, it shows a very emotional show. And to go to that well so many times and to have so much talent to do it, I'm just in awe of him to this day. He's just an amazing actor. He should be on camera more often. Can't really think of too many brothers or siblings that worked on the same show. In, in our life, it wasn't, it wasn't anything weird because we hadn't experienced anything different. So it was sort of normal, and then only afterwards when you look back at it as something that was really, yeah. truly special. Anytime you had a scene with Michael, at least for me, and I'm sure for everyone, it was very special because not only was he the captain leading the whole production, and had his hand in everything and made everyone feel like they were the only person that was talking to him at any one time. You stay here. I'll take a bite over there and talk to your father. It felt you very special to have him let you into his eyes because when you're doing a scene, you're looking at someone's eyes and you feel like you're having this real life relationship with yeah. this very powerful man and you feel very special. And you stay strong too, huh? Your pa's gonna need you, right? And Michael and I are doing this scene, and Michael starts to cry. And, you know, I hadn't planned on crying. I didn't, you know, it wasn't anything that was in the script, but it just came up in the moment where Michael starts crying. You see Michael Landon cry, there's, you can't stop. And so I started crying, and one of the best scenes I've ever done to this day. I guess the biggest life lesson that Michael Landon taught me uh, in Hollywood or in this type of job is to make it light and make it positive, where you can do, as we've talked about, every Little House, it was, you know, tragedy, drama, but the set was very, very fun and very light. And to be able to be raised by Michael as I was on the set, you know, to his experience and his attitude on the set of, we're doing a job, but we can have fun, was probably the best way, the best lesson that I learned from him. Mr. Ingalls? Thanks. You're welcome, sir. I've had a wonderful opportunity and lucky enough to be in Little House and to have to be a part of it. It's always going to be a part of television history because it is a show that is timeless. It is such a personal show in the way that it deals with issues that people will always deal with, I think it will always be um, relevant to what's going on.